Hello viewers, I am Dr. Robiul. I work as a lecturer in pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is hyperthermia. This video will contain the definition of hyperthermia, some brief discussion about thermoregulation, followed by the difference between fever and hyperthermia, types of hyperthermia, heat cramp, heat syncope, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and we will finish our discussion with malignant hyperthermia and management of these disorders. Okay, so a lot of topics, so let's begin. First question, what is hyperthermia? Now, the word hyperthermia is derived from two Greek words. Hyper, that is derived from the Greek huper, means over or beyond. And tharm, that is derived from Greek tharmos, means heat. And ia is the suffix at the end of the word hyperthermia. So, from this we can see that the literal meaning of hyperthermia is overheating. So, how can we define hyperthermia? Hyperthermia can be defined as elevated body temperature due to failed thermoregulation that occurs when a body produces or absorbs more heat than it dissipates. Okay? I hope you are still with me. You didn't run away just like my students do when I try to teach them definitions of pathology. I even have to show them teddy bear to keep them calm. So look, I am also showing you a teddy. So look at the teddy. Don't get scared because I will explain this definition line by line now. So what did we see in the first line of the definition? Hyperthermia means elevated body temperature due to failed thermoregulation. Now, what do we mean by elevated body temperature? In order to understand that, first we have to know what is the normal body temperature. Always remember, normal core body temperature or the rectal temperature in human beings is from 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius and if you like the Fahrenheit scale then that will be from 97.7 to 99.5 degree Fahrenheit so that is the normal core body temperature so hyperthermia will happen when the body temperature is elevated beyond this normal level then what did you see in the definition it is happening due to failure of thermoregulation. So, hyperthermia means elevated body temperature that is happening due to failed thermoregulation. And here we will see that our body will produce more heat or absorb more heat than it can dissipate. So, then you may be asking Dr. Rubiul, how does our body produce heat and how heat is dissipated in our body? And in order to understand that, now we have to know a thing or two about heat production and heat loss. Now always remember, body heat is generated by basal metabolic activity and also during muscle movement. And heat loss can occur by four methods. So what are the methods of heat loss? They include conduction, convection, radiation and evaporation. Now, what do they mean? To understand those things, we have to take a walk down the memory lane and uh, remember our elementary physics. I'm sure you have read those books. So, conduction refers to transfer of heat from one solid object to another solid object that is in direct contact with it. So, that is conduction. We are transferring heat from one solid to another solid part and those has to be in direct contact with each other. What is convection? Convection means transfer of heat from body surface to surrounding air and we use air currents to do that. So convection means transfer of heat 
from our body surface to the surrounding air via air current. The next method of heat loss is via radiation where we are transferring heat to colder solid objects that are not in direct contact with our body. And the last method that we will talk about is evaporation. Here heat loss is happening during conversion of liquid to vapor. So from the above discussion it is obvious that our body has different mechanisms to generate heat as well as to lose heat. Now who is regulating these different mechanisms? And the answer will be hypothalamus. Now always remember hypothalamus is directly sensitive to changes in our core temperature and it is also indirectly sensitive to the temperature sensitive neurons that are found in our skin. And the idea is the core temperature or the temperature sensitive neurons in the skin they send afferent signal to the hypothalamus and depending on those signals hypothalamus will again send efferent signals to different parts of our body and take necessary steps to maintain core temperature at a certain set point. And I have already mentioned the normal set point or the normal range of core temperature. If you recall that was from 36.5 to 37.5 degree Celsius. And always remember this normal set point is very vital. It is necessary for the normal metabolic function of different cells of our body and it is also important to maintain the normal functions of different enzymes in our body. So hypothalamus knows when to increase heat generation then heat loss and when to increase heat loss compared to heat generation. For example whenever we are in a cold environment do we need heat generation more or do we need to lose heat more? Well the answer is obvious. In cold environment we have to generate more heat otherwise we won't survive. So in cold environment the hypothalamus will send signal and uh, that will cause vasoconstrictions of the blood vessels in the skin. That is cutaneous vasoconstriction. Why? Because then there will be less blood flow in the cutaneous blood vessels and that will prevent heat loss and also there will be shivering. Can you recall what happens when you jump into a pool of cold water? You shiver sometimes, right? So shivering, what is the mechanism? Well, shivering that will cause muscle contraction and that will generate heat. So those things will happen during cold environment to maintain temperature. Similarly, whenever we are in a very hot environment, what do we do? We sweat, right? And sweating is one of the main mechanisms for heat loss. So surely whenever we are in a hot environment, we need to lose more heat than heat is produced and sweating is one of the mechanisms that will do that. So how does hyperthermia differ from fever? And the answer is hyperthermia differ from fever in that the body's temperature set point remains unchanged in hyperthermia whereas in fever the temperature set point will be set at an elevated level. So now we will move on to the next topic and talk about some heat related disorders. So they will include heat cramps, heat syncope, heat exhaustion, heat stroke and also we will finish our discussion with malignant hyperthermia. So what do we mean by heat cramp? To understand that first we have to know what do we mean by cramp and cramp means painful contraction of the muscle. So heat cramp means painful contraction of the voluntary muscles following vigorous exercise and profuse sweating in hot weather. Now always remember the core body temperature will remain normal in heat cramp. The major mechanism of heat cramp is extracellular sodium depletion via sweating. 
and since sodium loss is responsible for heat cramps so if we try to just give water to the patient without salt that will worsen the symptoms so instead we have to rehydrate the patient with oral rehydration salts or intravenous saline to improve the symptoms so always remember the management of heat cramp and that is rehydration of the patient by oral rehydration salts or by giving intravenous saline the next topic is regarding heat syncope now in order to understand this thing first we have to know what do we mean by syncope now this is a term used to denote temporary loss of consciousness and posture the non-medical person may refer to these as fainting or passing out and the mechanism of syncope is usually due to temporary insufficient blood flow to the brain now syncope can also happen in hot weather since there will be peripheral vasodilation in hot weather and that can also result in temporary insufficient blood flow in since blood is now pulling in the peripheral circulation so that will result in transient loss of consciousness and posture and that will be referred as heat syncope the next topic that we will discuss is regarding heat exhaustion now always remember heat exhaustion is the most common hyperthermic syndrome it occurs due to prolonged exertion in hot and humid weather with profuse sweating and inadequate salt and water replacement now the next point that i will say is very important in heat exhaustion core temperature will be elevated and that will be between 37 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius the clinical features of heat exhaustion will include dehydration tachycardia that is increase in the heart rate there will be also headache weakness and irritability so what will be the treatment the first thing we have to do is we have to remove the patient from the heat source otherwise the remaining treatment won't work okay so first remove the patient from the heat then we have to use active evaporative cooling by the help of spray fan to reduce temperature of the patient so the next thing we can do is active evaporative cooling by spray fan or by fanning the fluid loss should be replaced and we can replace that either by oral rehydration mixture or we have to give intravenous isotonic saline and always remember up to 5 liter positive fluid balance may be required in the first 24 hours moving on to the next topic and that was heat stroke now always remember this is a very serious condition heat stroke is a life threatening condition it will occur in high ambient temperature high humidity and exertion and core body temperature will be higher than 40 degrees celsius and why will we have this thing why will we have core body temperature higher than 40 degrees celsius because there will be failure of thermoregulatory mechanism and there will be absent of sweating as well since the thermoregulatory mechanism can't function properly so what will be the clinical features of heat stroke so in heat stroke there will be generalized vasodilation and peripheral pooling of the blood and effective circulating blood volume will be reduced and those things will um, give us certain clinical features so before telling you the clinical features I just told you the mechanism of stroke here and there is generalized vasodilation peripheral pooling of the blood so the effective circulating blood volume will be reduced and that will result in stroke in the long run so what will be the 
clinical features are symptoms of heat stroke. Obviously, there will be hyperthermia. Temperature will be more than 40 degrees Celsius. The patient will have headache, nausea, vomiting. There may be muscle tremor, coarse muscle tremor. There may be some neurological manifestations like confusion, loss of consciousness. Sweating will be absent because the thermoregulatory mechanism is failing. There will be some evidence of electrolyte imbalance, for example, hyperkalemia. There will be tachycardia, that is increased heart rate, and arrhythmia will be also seen in many cases. And heat stroke may also become complicated by some other things, for example, it may become complicated by hypovolemic shock, disseminated intravascular coagulation, there may be rhabdomyolysis, and we will talk more about that after a while. There will be lactic acidosis, liver failure, kidney failure, cerebral edema, pulmonary edema, etc. in heat stroke as well. So you may be asking Dr. Robiul, why will be shock present in heat stroke? And the answer is obvious because, like I said, there is marked generalized vasodilation and blood will begin to pull in the peripheral circulation so the effective circulating blood volume will become reduced so although we have blood in our body we will have less blood circulating and that will result in hypovolemic shock so why will we have rhabdomyolysis in heat stroke now let's talk about that now, in order to understand why rhabdomyolysis occurs in heat stroke, first we have to know what do we mean by rhabdomyolysis. So, rhabdo means striated, that stands for the skeletal muscle, myo means muscle, and lysis means breakdown. And if I want to be more specific, we will see necrosis here as well. So, rhabdomyolysis means necrosis of the skeletal muscles of our body and why that thing will happen in heat stroke in order to understand that we have to talk briefly about ryanodine receptor now what are those things ryanodine receptors are special type of receptors they are located in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of our skeletal muscle Recall that any cell has endoplasmic reticulum inside them. So muscle cells, they also contain endoplasmic reticulum and they are given a fancy name that is sarcoplasmic reticulum. They have, in fact, similar function. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum that are located in the skeletal muscle, they contain the ryanodine receptor. One of the receptor is called ranodin receptor 1 or RYR1 and that receptor regulates the release of calcium from sarcoplasm. During heat stroke the function of ranodin receptor 1 becomes disrupted. That allows calcium to leak out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm and we all know what happens when calcium is increased in the cytoplasm of muscle cell it will stimulate muscle contraction and uh, as a byproduct of that muscle contraction heat will also produce and if this muscle contraction continues that is if there is sustained contraction of the skeletal muscle that may even cause death of the muscle and there may be muscle necrosis and that is known as rhabdomyolysis. So always remember this thing how rhabdomyolysis happens in heat stroke. The examiners are very fond of this type of question. So then you have to answer that during heat stroke it can derange the function of ryanodine receptor 1. So that will lead to more and more calcium entering into the cytoplasm from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and they will stimulate muscle contraction and sustained muscle contraction will even lead to death of the skeletal muscles. 
The last topic that we will talk about is regarding malignant hyperthermia. And we will see malignant hyperthermia whenever there is inherited mutation in ranodine receptor 1. And in individuals who have inherited mutation in ranodine receptor 1, there will be heat stroke like condition that is the core body temperature will be higher than 40 degrees Celsius and there will be also muscle contractures following exposure to certain common anesthetics and that will be known as malignant hyperthermia. So always remember the clinical features will be similar to that of heat stroke but the mechanism is that these individuals are having inherited mutation in their ranodine receptor 1. So how can we manage heat stroke? So always remember heat stroke is a medical emergency so the management has to be rapid. There has to be rapid cooling and that can be achieved by spraying with water, fanning or even um, using ice packs in the axilla and groins of the patient. Cold crystalloid intravenous fluids are also um, given to the patient. But one thing we have to remember whenever we are um, using fluid replacement therapy we have to monitor that thing because if we overdo that that can even worsen the situation. It can even cause pulmonary edema or metabolic derangement if not balanced properly. We also have to do some investigations to determine the complications of heat stroke. So a lot of hematological tests, biochemical tests, coagulation tests, liver function, kidney function tests, even x-rays will be necessary. And often the patients of heat stroke are managed in intensive care unit. And one thing you have to remember, sometimes there can be late onset rhabdomyolysis. So whenever we see a patient who had core temperature higher than 40 degrees Celsius, we have to monitor that patient uh, to see if late onset rhabdomyolysis happening or not. And uh, we have to assess kidney function, liver function before discharging this type of patient as well. So this concludes today's discussion on heat related illness and hyperthermia. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go to your textbooks to know more informations. Okay, so that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.